Hello YouTube. Well, this wasn't the video I intended to make, um, and I'm a little surprised to find myself making it, if I'm honest. But I realised whilst chatting on Discord that um, I need to make a, a declaration, I need to make a, a statement. And it's for my own well-being. Now, if you're here for bookish content, if you're here to hear book reviews and things like that, uh, this is just a personal vlog, so uh, you're welcome to, to come back uh, some other time. But honestly, I would very much appreciate it if you listen to this, because this is effectively a big channel update. This is explaining what my situation is and what, what the channel is going to be like going forwards. Because I realised something that I need to do, and that is I need to sort out personal care. I made a video on the 20th of April 2016, which is unlisted and will be linked below in the comments. Uh, well, it'll be linked in the description, sorry. It was 41 minutes long, and there's a bit of a preamble and a bit of a, a random uh, discussion at the end where I talk about just random crap, but the majority of it is me describing what it's like to live with a disability. And more than five years later, I'm still living with that same disability, obviously. I'm not cured, I'm the same guy, and I'm just as disabled now as I was then. In fact, I'm noticeably worse. I have my medications here. I used to have these strips, which I show off in the video. I now have these, which uh, have a morning and night, and you can see how many tablets I take each day. So, quite a few in there. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to go through them all. I actually discussed them in uh, in the video from five years ago, and uh, most of them are the same. I'm no longer on um, on tramadol. Uh, tramadol is an opiate. It's in the uh, the same family as morphine and, by extension, heroin. I mean, obviously, that's an extreme uh, comparison, but even still, it is addictive, highly addictive, and uh, pain. Um, Painkiller addiction is a big problem. I've been weaned off them over the space of a couple of years. I'm honestly considering going back to them, uh, if the doctors will approve, simply because my pain levels have increased dramatically. I currently am having massive problems with this wrist. I have uh, tendonitis in this wrist, which is really making things difficult, just like clenching as hard, writing with this hand. If I was left-handed, I'd, I'd be screwed. Um, picking up a games controller, like the pain that runs down this wrist at the moment, I, I physically can't do it. And this comes and goes, like it's really playing up today. I was playing a video game earlier today. Um, that's probably the last I'm going to be playing of a video game for the next week or so, because since this has started really, really uh, playing up, I know this takes days to heal. So... I'm not going to be touching a video game for the next week. And that's just a, a sad reality of my life. I had a fall, which you may be aware of if you've been following this channel. I had a big black eye for a long time and I fell in the shower. And I, I smacked my face into the side of the bath. I also landed very heavily on my right knee. And uh, I have screwed up this knee completely. This knee is more painful now than my bad leg. My left leg used to be my bad leg. I tore a muscle in that leg years ago, and I've walked with a limp ever since. But now I, I have like a double limp because this knee is so painful and swells daily. I cannot walk on this leg, which means that now I'm used to walking with a cane uh, to support m the the a weak muscle on my left uh, on my left leg, but my right knee is so bad that I can't put weight on it for more than a few steps before it really starts to pound and ache. I mean, it can support more weight, but it's so much more painful. Uh, so I basically can't walk at all. I'm going to have to make uh, an appointment with uh, with doctors and um, have an assessment done because at, at this point, I can no longer make it from my front door to my corner shop and back. I tried. This week was the first time I went to the shop on my own in over a month. Actually, probably more than two months, I think. I can't remember when I actually had the fall, but it was the first time I left the house and went anywhere uh, where I was walking. I've had a taxi take me from one place to another because I went to the cinema and the taxi dropped me off at the cinema and I got another taxi back from the cinema. The amount of pain I was in just going to the shop and back and that the distance is is so small that I have done it in 10 minutes. I've gone to the shop and back in 10 minutes and done the shop in that time whilst I was watching a stream where someone said, we're gonna take a 10 minute bathroom break and I'm right, I'm gonna to go to the shop and, 
uh, you know, grab a couple of things. And I managed to get there and back in 10 minutes. So that gives you an idea of just how close this shop is. And that was, that was, you know, only six months ago. I physically can't do that walk now. I tried this week, like I say. By the time I came in, the pain in my back and my, my, uh, uh, my legs were so intense that I was sweating and gasping. I collapsed on the sofa and I just, I lay there, kind of curled up for about 20 minutes. And I'd only walked a few yards. So I, I need a wheelchair at this point. That, that's just a reality. Like I, I physically cannot move without one. I'm going to need one. So God knows how I'm going to get get that kind of thing sorted. But I'm, I need to figure it out because at this rate, I'm going to be so reliant on delivery services and other people that I'm going to become a complete hermit if I don't get some kind of aid that lets me move. Unfortunately, it's going to have to be an electric wheelchair because there is no way in hell with the, the tendonitis in my wrists, the, the, um, the, the shoulder issues I've got with the snapping scapula and the, the back pains that I have, all the, the problems I have developed sciatica in my lower back. With all of these problems, there's no way in hell I could push a wheelchair with my arms. Like Just, just doing that movement twice, I can already feel pains down my side. Like, it is so intense. My body is falling apart, and I am so aware of just how bad it's falling apart. I'm also aware of other things, like, I'm not having migraines quite as often, which is good. They, they tend to come and go in clusters. Um, I'll, sometimes I'll have two months where I'll have a migraine every three to four days, and then I'll have a month where I'll have one in the whole month. I have been somewhat lucky recently in that the migraines have dipped down a little bit they're, they're now at about a moderate level which is nice uh, but also i'm aware of something that i do that i really need to hold myself to account for and that is the medication i showed you this is one big lie this is the medication i'm prescribed every day it is not the medication i take every day the medication i take every day is basically this because i don't take my medication because I'm a fuck up. I don't take my medication. I will sometimes remember to take the Zen date. Um, and I will take painkillers when I'm in pain, which can be at any time of the day. And I'll just grab a handful of day, which is not the way you're supposed to take them. Like, I am, I am channeling Gregory fucking house way too much here. Like, this is not the way I'm supposed to be, which is why I've got this out. I haven't used this in... God knows when the last time I used this was. And I, before this video, filled up. It's Thursday. It's Thursday at um, a little after 1am right now. I filled up Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. I'm going to fill this every Sunday. I'm going to make sure that I take these because I have not been properly taking my medication. And you know how I could tell? I looked at the date on my medication. My last prescription was fulfilled at the end of July. It's November. I, I was putting in my prescriptions, but I was taking so few of them that I was developing a backlog of medication. I'm running out now, because I take them sporadically, but I do still take them. I'm running out now. I've still got a couple of weeks left. But the fact that I I fulfilled a prescription in, at the end of July, and August, September, October, and now November, four months how have I managed to go this long without fulfilling my prescriptions? It's because I'm not taking them. That's why. It's because I have prescriptions dating back to December last year. You know, I've still got like strips with two or three tablets in them. I've still got boxes that have still got a couple of tablets left over because I'm not taking them properly. Because the problem that I have is that I don't just have Ehlers Danlos syndrome, which I described in that video. I also have quite a crippling level of ADHD. I was diagnosed with higher functioning autistic spectrum disorder with associated ADHD, which is mental health talk for we don't actually know. The Xenodate really helps. It really does. Like, I take that, it's night and day different. Um, if I've taken Xenodate on the day um, that I'm, I'm active, I can feel the difference. I am way, way better at organising my time and being productive. So it really does help, but I need to start taking the other medication because I'm too tired and too much pain and I am clearly suffering a uh, depressive bout. It is very obvious to me at this moment, this is what I call a lucid moment. 
I'll have these occasionally during big bouts of depression where I'll have a moment for a few hours where I am extremely motivated to fix the problem. And this is why I'm recording this now, because I was posting on the Discord. Um, I was very, very clearly aware that things were getting to me. I filled up this because I need to take my medication. The medication is what's going to fix this. The medication will put me in a position where the pain will be manageable and my mood will be stabilised and my ability to focus will be controlled enough that I'll be able to do basic household tasks like washing dishes, cooking meals, actually showering every day. Like, rather than doing what I often do, which is lie in bed for four or five days straight, ordering takeout food and doing nothing. Literally nothing. Uh, not reading books, not playing games, not even watching TV, just sitting there occasionally scrolling through uh, a bit of social media, watching the odd video on YouTube, falling asleep halfway through it. I, I waste days, entire days, just lying in bed, in pain, unable to focus on a damn thing. So I need to keep myself to account. And that's what this video is. Uh, is. It's me reminding myself and telling you as a community and the wider world, because it's a public video, that I... I'm suffering, and if I don't focus on the fact that I'm suffering, acknowledge that I'm suffering, and actively move to change it, I'm going to kill myself. Not through suicide, through negligence. I'm going to I'm going to be complicit in my own spiral to a position where I'm just gonna be so incapable of looking after myself, I'm gonna drop dead. My my body is already screwed. My heart is already weak. Uh, I am currently having issues with uh, abdominal pains and I'm going to be having uh, clinic appointments uh, to check out what, what may be an enlarged liver. Enlarged liver can be caused by a lot of different problems. Most likely it's gallstones, but it could be caused by severe problems. We're talking things like heart disease, liver disease, cancer. I need to consider that I could be way more ill than even and I realise I am right now. And if I don't make changes, if I don't make uh, an effort to actually fix some of the issues, I may not have time to enjoy anything that I like in life. I may, th this may be the point where my life just <sighs> hits rock bottom if I don't make changes now. And hell, it may even be too late, but if I don't make them, th this is all I've got. So, like, if, if, I've, if I've pushed it too late, I need to grab what I can and I need to make what changes I can so that at the very least I can enjoy what time I have left. And I need to be aware of this. I need to be very aware of this. I am extremely overweight. And I've been losing a lot of weight. But I question, am I losing weight because I'm successfully dieting? Or am I losing weight because I simply don't eat? Because eating means washing the dishes and cooking a meal. And doing those things are two household tasks that I do not have the discipline to plan for. It's genuinely sad that the, the thing I'm getting praised for by my doctors and my family is the fact that I'm losing weight, which they see as me making an effort, when in actual fact it is a symptom of me being so incapable of managing my own lifestyle that I don't eat more than one meal a day and sometimes go entire days without eating. Not because I'm doing a, a fast, Although I have convinced myself some days that, you know what, I'll just have a fast day today. Because, you know, I've been trying this keto diet and fast days are a good idea. No, no, sometimes I do a fast day because I'm too, uh, I'm too lazy to get up, wash the dishes and cook a meal. Um, but the laziness is inspired by chronic fatigue and chronic pain and an inability to be mobile. It's not laziness just through being bone idle. It's... A level of disinterest in self-care because I, I'm not engaged with it uh, and as I'm a, I'm not neurotypical in that regard if I'm not engaged actually motivating myself to do something is extremely difficult so even if I had no physical disability the ADHD would be enough to get in the way of me preparing meals properly and actually eating properly I would cut corners and um, make a mess of it I know I would um, I know many people with ADHD who do and they have no physical disabilities 
add in chronic fatigue and chronic pain, the chance of me actually preparing a meal is practically zero. I've had rice and pasta and sauces and tinned food and frozen food in my house for months and I have not prepared a single meal that wasn't something I could quick fry or something that uh, I could prepare cold. I have not prepared anything, uh, with the exception of like something I can whack in the microwave for two minutes. I subsist almost entirely on really convenient foods, and I really do mean really convenient foods, and takeaways. It is not healthy in the slightest, and I do this because I simply cannot make the meals myself. I don't have the, um, the, the impetus uh, to go and do it, and I don't have the physical strength to push through, even if I had that impetus. So I need to make these changes. This is a requirement, otherwise my life is just gonna devolve. And I think what I need to do in order to make sure that I keep myself to task is I need to chronicle the issues I'm going through. I need to make sure that I put myself in the public eye. By making this public, uh, I'm shaming myself. I'm forcing myself to do something about it. And I've got little things I'm going to try and do that might make a bit of a difference. That might make a enough of a difference that I'm going to hopefully be able to repair some of the damage that I've done to my own body, my own mental health, and my living arrangements. And in that, I'm hoping that I can inspire more change because if I'm doing this just for myself, I won't do it. And it's, it's stupid, but it's, it's something that uh, Dr. Jordan Peterson discusses in some of his lectures, um, who uh, uh, is someone who's, he, he gives very practical, very obvious advice, but he phrases it in a way that makes you listen. He's very good at what he does. And one of the advice, uh, one of the things he, he says advice-wise is that um, people don't like themselves. Uh, it's provable by the way we treat ourselves. We would never treat another person the way we treat ourselves. Ah, yeah, um... I sneeze, and I know I'm going to be in pain afterwards because the convulsion of the muscles starts all the abdominal pains on again. Oh god! Uh, is, yeah, as I was saying, um, Dr. Jordan Peterson suggests that we don't like ourselves. We don't like um, the person we are because we know our own secrets. We know every disgusting little thought that's gone through our heads. We know all the little shortcuts we've done. We know all the horrible things we've thought. Every time we, we think mean things or perverted things or, or just act in a cruel way but only in our own heads. No one else knows about that but we know about it. It's why we're not prepared to actually do anything that, that will be decent for ourselves. But we'll do it for other people. Like if you have a guest around, you'll wash a dish. And you'll make sure it's clean, and you'll wash the cutlery cut, cut for them, and you'll make sure it's clean. And you would never dream of giving them um, a dish uh, that you've run under the cold water tap and just scrubbed the bits off. But I guarantee you've done that for yourself, haven't you? When you've been a bit lazy, you've gone, you know what? Um, I fancy uh, I fancy a sandwich. Uh, I'll just get a plate, have my toast on, just wipe it down. It's fine, I only had toast on it. I'll just use the knife I buttered the toast with, cut the sandwich with it. You would never dream of using that for a sandwich you were preparing for a guest. And that's an example of personal care. The, the same with medication. If you were a responsible carer for someone else, you would make sure that that person took their, their medication on time every day. You would have a system, you'd write it down, you'd keep a record, every single tablet would be taken on time, regularly, like clockwork. Even a pet. If you have a dog or a cat and it's got a problem and you need to give it medication, you'll be mixing the tablets in with the food. You'll make sure it has them every day. You'll monitor to see if they've had them. Make sure they've not eaten around the tablets and actually, you know, everything's fine. Right? You will make sure that you take them to the follow-up appointment and you'll have to pay the vet for that. Because, I mean, in Britain, we have the NHS, it's all free. But you have to pay the vet 
You have to pay for medical medical um, systems for animals. You have to pay for all of their tablets. So not only are you paying money for it, you're also going to look after them. You go to the doctors in Britain. You don't pay for the consultation. You don't pay for the prescription in Scotland or Wales, or if you're disabled, or if you're below a certain income. So only if you're working and above a certain income in England do you pay for prescriptions, uh, which is only about half the population. But even still... Even if you pay for the prescription, it's a, it's a really small amount uh, by comparison to the likes of America. So you'll go, you'll effectively have a free consultation, free follow-ups, and really cheap uh, medications. Most people in Britain will not finish the course of medication they're on. They won't take them on time. Uh, they'll skip tablets. They'll um, only do maybe half the tablets. They'll take them until they start feeling better, and then they'll just they'll, they'll, they'll forget about them. Um, about one in five people will go for the consultation, get prescribed medication, won't even fulfill the prescription. They won't even take the prescription to the pharmacy and get the prescription, even if it's free. Because, ah, it's okay, I'll, I'll do it some other time, and then they forget, and then they can't be asked. And whatever it was that was bothering them, whatever pain they're in, whatever issue, they just bear with it. Because we don't like ourselves. And it's a telling thing, really, when you think about it. When you think about just how much... You do do that. And it's it's something that you'd like to go, oh, no, that's stupid, of course I look after myself, of course I care about me. No, you don't. You really don't. And, um, I mean, jo Dr. Jordan Peterson has a uh, a, a certain reputation uh, on the internet. He appeals to some quite toxic people, but honestly, um, that's not his fault. Um, and I've met some of these people. Some of them are insane. Um, but... Peterson, as a person, is a very skilled, very astute clinical psychiatrist, and he knows his stuff. And honestly, like when he describes these these mechanisms in uh, the human psyche, you, you have to question whether or not you can go against this this uh, this trend. And I don't think I can. That's why I wanted to make this video where I push I push myself to be accountable to other people, even if. The other people don't really care. The embarrassment factor of saying this to people and then not doing it, it's enough that it'll, it'll give me a little bit more motivation. It's a silly little thing, but it's something. So yeah, that's, um, that's how I've been feeling recently. And I'm aware of just how bad my health is getting and just how bad everything is getting for me. I'm going to start making videos again on the Tornado Shorts channel which uh, I've, I've got linked uh, down below. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe that channel. Uh, it did have uh, some bookish shorts. I'm going to remove them uh, because I realised that I can't do bookish shorts that are worth a damn. Um, they're just not worth they're just not worth watching. They're, they're too short for me to say anything of note about a book. Um, what I'm instead going to do is I'm going to turn the Tornado Shorts account into a personal blog account. And I'm gonna I'm gonna discuss what I'm reading occasionally. Like I'll make a video. Where I'm, like, I'm reading this at the moment. You know everything's fine. You know I'm I've got this far in. I'm really enjoying the book. That kind of thing. Um, but most of the time I'm gonna be using it to make videos about uh, just day to day issues. So um, I'll, I'll talk about things like as a disabled man, what it's like to um, struggle with day to day tasks like. Uh, taking out the bins, um, finding time to shower, silly things like that. And it's going to be basically a quick slice of life. And I'm going to try and put up at least one video a day. Because what that will do is it will force me to be very accountable. And it will force me to be open. And it will force me to be honest. It will force me to get out of bed and get dressed every day. It's silly things like that. Um, and I think it will be a positive influence on making me more centred. That's that's the plan anyway. Now, what that means is I can focus more on this channel, on uh, trying to put out more deep and interesting content, um, maybe a few less videos. So I might only put up uh, two or three videos a month where I review books, uh, I talk about um, video games, and I 
talk about media in general. Like I may, I'm, I'm considering doing like a TV show and cinema uh, review as well on this, so it, it becomes like a media channel in general. I want to be able to talk about a few things. I've got a few book reviews that I was doing that I, I had ready, but I've since decided not to upload, and that's because I wasn't happy with the reviews. I did a review for Senlin Ascends and The Way of Kings. Both of them were about 20 minutes long, and they were rambly and were not well put together. And I think the problem was, is that I have not been in a good way. I have been in a big, uh, depressive trough for a few weeks now. And I was making those videos not because I was excited to talk about the books, but because I was feeling the pressure to need to upload something because I hadn't put up a proper review this week. And that is not a good excuse. So I'm going to try and take my time with these things. I've got a couple of things I want to make videos about, a couple of topics that I'm excited to talk about, and I still want to put the reviews up for Sendlin Ascends and The Way of Kings. But I want to re-record them and I want to do them justice. Because I think that these reviews can effectively be a, a body of work for me. They can be um, a an evergreen set of content. Because videos like this one, like a vlog, um, they're largely watch one and done. Because they're topical, at least topical for my life. If I do videos about news events, uh, the industry, they're largely one and done again. Some of the discussions, like say, a discussion on how to judge literature, that kind of thing, is evergreen. So some of the discussion topics can be watched whenever, but I want to have a back catalogue of videos that people can drop in and watch a year from now and they'll still be just as relevant. Uh, that's my hope. So I'm going to use that Tornado Shorts account uh, more effectively. I'll keep, what I'll do is I'll keep the other videos up, but I'll just draw a line here and the Tornado Shorts account is going to uh, focus primarily now on just vlogs. So. Hopefully this was uh, an interesting video for people. I'm aware that this is not what a lot of people want from my channel at the moment. A lot of people are, are hoping to get bookish content. They're, they're hoping to discuss books and watch reviews and listen to me criticise the uh, the book industry and things like that. Some people are, are maybe wanting to hear a bit of a political take on some of these books because I know my channel has tended that way, whether I wanted it to or not. And I will probably continue to do all that. I have a few things in mind that I want to do. I've got a few ideas for videos that I'm going to be working on soon. I want to do a disturbing books video, which is one that I've had kind of on the back burner for a while now. Um, I want to do a, uh, a video on objectivity uh, in reviewing. I want to do a video on the nature of literary fiction and what it means. I've got a couple of ideas for a few videos, so these are all stuff I want to record, uh, and um, they're all videos I could record in the next few days um, and then put out fairly quick, uh, fairly quickly because I don't need to have read anything else to put these up because I've already read the books I want to talk about. There are still a few a few books I would like to uh, review, uh, all books that I've read. So, like I say, the Sen and Sens, there's Way of Kings. There is The Hunger Games, which I would like to review uh, because I think it would be an interesting one to review from the perspective of someone who isn't the, tar the target audience, the, which is teenage girls. The Dresden Files, I'd like to review that. That was one of the very first book uh, books that uh, I read when I started with Booktube, uh, was uh, the first Dresden Files book. So I'd like to, to review books one and two of the Dresden Files. I think that's everything I've got on the back burner at the moment, but there's a few others. Um, I would like to then start in with some of the uh, some of the more political books that I've been talking about. So I've got a few of them um, around me at the moment. I've got Fahrenheit 451, which I read recently, uh, that I'd like to review. I've got over here, I've got 1984, which is another one I'd like to discuss. And on the shelf behind me, I've got a few here that I would like to discuss as well. I have um, Brave New World and Slaughterhouse-Five up here, which are two that I would like to discuss. I also have uh, around here somewhere, I've got The Handmaid's Tale, which is right on, up on the top shelf, which you can't see. 
Um, I would love to discuss that one uh, sometime soon. I've also got uh, the Cormac McCarthy collection as well, which I got recently, which I mentioned in another video and you know, asked if there was a, an author people were interested in hearing. And Cormac McCarthy was, uh, was up there. Um, I've not read anything from Cormac McCarthy yet. I've got four of his books here and I've been told that I would probably enjoy them. Uh, I want to look into some of the uh, the non um, A Song of Ice and Fire uh, George R. R. Martin books, which I've also got here. All books that I could see myself reviewing and uh, talking about in detail. Uh, and I would like to uh, spend a bit more time discussing um, the novellas of Stephen King as well, because I think that they get a lot less notice than some of his bigger novels. I've got so many different books I want to go through. Uh, current reading, of course. I have Recursion and The Hard King, which are two books that I'm uh, starting at the moment, basically. They could be a while before I finish them, though. My reading speed has, has dropped, and it's largely because of the other things I've been talking about in this video. The pain, the fatigue, uh, the inability to focus. This is all stuff I need to focus on before I can focus on the reading stuff. And until I can get to a point where I can use my hand, um, like until this problem is solved, because I, I can I can grip a controller, but the pain that radiates down my hand is so in intense, I can't play for more than a few minutes. Like the last time I did this, I was unable to to play a video game for about two weeks. So I really need to to allow my wrist to heal before I can do that. But I would still like to talk about video games. I've got a couple of video game topics I want to go into in depth. One I want to do is a deep dive into Bloodborne. Um, Bloodborne is one of those games, it's it's like the, the Marmite of gaming. It's bizarre. Because for me, Bloodborne is a, is a game that I really love certain aspects of. And utterly fucking hate other aspects of. It is, it is a game I could talk about for hours. Because I have, for a long time, said Bloodborne was crap. And I maintain that Bloodborne is crap. It is badly designed, badly put together, and badly made. It is a terrible, terrible game. It's also a masterpiece of game design. Bloodborne has shocking systems built within it that are so elegant and so well designed. Uh, part of it's, its art direction and its, um, its tone and its level design are simply genius. And I kind of want to break down some of the best bits of Bloodborne and talk about them as well as discuss some of the awful parts of Bloodborne that frankly make me wonder how on earth that the one game can be both fantastic and awful at the same time. It's, a, it's one of those things where like, if I was rating this on a number system, what do I give it a 5 out of 10? That doesn't sound right. For certain reasons it's worthy of a 2 out of 10 because it's just so mind-numbingly stupid. And other cases, it's a solid 9 out of 10. Some of the best examples of, of certain mechanics, art direction, certain things. And I, I would love to dive into this and properly discuss it. I'd also like to do some breakdowns of genres. I've had on the back burner, like half halfway made, where I've, I've got the gameplay footage and I've planned out the video, but I've not recorded the voiceover yet for... Like a top 10 action games video, a top 10 pla uh, 2D platformers video. I've planned these out and I've had the footage recorded and ready for a long time. I just need to put them together and you know, make sure that it's worth watching. Because I don't want to put together a shoddy video for these topics. So that's something that I'd like to, uh, I'd like to have uh, a whack at. Because I, I do want to make both bookish and video game content. I think that there is some crossover. A lot of people claim that like this... This bookish content and nerdy content doesn't mix and merge. I disagree entirely. I know most of the readers that I talk to are big fantasy and sci-fi geeks. And fantasy and sci-fi is the bread and butter of video games as well. And then you have that crossover point in the middle with something like Dungeons and Dragons, which is basically creative fiction. It's improv theatre and it's tabletop gaming all in one. And... Um, there are so many video games that are based off tabletop role-playing and so many aspects of, of modern fiction that could apply to something like tabletop role-playing that you can definitely merge the two at that point. It feels very uh, 
it feels very much like the, the middle ground. And then, of course, there's, uh, there's the, the geeky media of, uh, of the day, because we, we can't really discuss uh, video games and books and things like that without a- addressing the elephant in the room, and that is that cinema has been taken over by geek culture. The Marvel films, Star Wars, and you know, just in general sci-fi and fantasy films and TV shows have just dominated recently. There are so many new fantasy TV shows coming out that geek media is taking over. And it's, it's interesting to, to see that the media that I like seems to be cross-platform. It doesn't matter if it's a book, a game, a TV show, a film. Um, all of these things are interesting in their own way. And um, I think that I kind of want to discuss all of them and not just be limited to a booktube channel. Though I do want to focus on books, because one of the things I've noticed is as my health has deteriorated, which is what this video has been mainly about, I feel that my ability to engage with interactive media, like video games, is falling off. Um, And my ability to focus on films um, is... I'm not sure if it's it's lesser, but I, I find I'm enjoying films less. It, it feels more of a chore to sit and watch a film, uh, whereas a book, I can read a couple of pages, I can put it down, I can have a rest. I am reading very slowly, and I really do mean slowly, but I can read a couple of pages, and then I can put the book down, I can just lie back and close my eyes for 10 minutes, and I can pick it up and read another few pages. And if I did that with a film, I'd be watching 10 minutes you know, switch it off after a scene, watch it again, switch it off after the scene. I've done that with films. It doesn't work as well. But anyway, I'm going to cut it there, as I think I've been rambling for enough time. But I'm going to I'm going to label this video Living with a Disability, the same as I did with the last one, and uh, link the, uh, the original video, which will remain unlisted, uh, down below. Um, I've discussed a few things in that video, uh, which are a bit time appropriate. Uh, like I discuss uh, my political uh, affiliations a little. You'll notice there's a Green Party rosette in the background. I used to be a member of the Green Party. I left the Green Party when they became woke as all hell and did, wouldn't discuss anything other than gender politics because I was, at the time, quite an, an avid environmentalist and they wouldn't listen to, uh, uh, to uh, anything about nuclear power and they wouldn't uh, focus on what they claimed to be their main policies, which was environmentalism and uh, workers' rights and um, benefits and things like that. So the welfare state, that was what they claimed to be their their big focus. And instead they were focusing entirely on gender politics and I got fed up. So I left them and I joined UKIP, which was interesting because um, in that video, I said that I was in support of remaining in the EU. And I was, I voted remain. I didn't join UKIP until after the, uh, the vote to leave the EU happened, which is an interesting change for me, as I saw after we left the EU, or at least voted to leave the EU, I saw the uh, corruption of the European Union uh, go full swing, and just so many different news articles started coming out, I was like, oh wow, these people were right, we really do need to be out of this, this thing is corrupt and it's collapsing, we need to escape. So I have since been convinced that there was a good argument to leave the EU, Additionally, at the time, I was extremely critical of the Conservative Party, uh, for good reason. David Cameron was a terrible, terrible Prime Minister, and his Conservative Party was pushing austerity, which was cutting disability benefits, uh, minimum wage, it was um, cutting services, it was basically devaluing everything that the working class and the poorest people in the country needed in order to... Uh, make up for uh, a banking crisis that was created by the fucking hyper-rich. It's like, that's not fair. Um, The Conservative Party of today, on the other hand, is funding the NHS, funding deprived areas, is um, keeping disability benefits at a reasonable level, and is conserving our way of life, whereas the Conservative Party before was actively pushing back, and, like, austerity was was a terrible, terrible thing. Um... The, the Conservative Party of today are quite the opposite. I would argue the Conservative Party of today is very similar to the Labour Party of the late 90s, um, which I, I'm not going to say is a bad thing. So that that's where my political sways changed a little. I've got something in my eye here. Uh, 
But it's, it's always interesting to go back, like the video's five years old and you can see that I've changed a little bit, but not a great deal. It's not well edited, I do ramble a fair bit, uh, to be fair I've done that in this video, but in this video I will be editing out pauses and ums and things like that. In that video I didn't bother, so uh, it's not uh, not necessarily an easy watch, but it's interesting to go back and have a look. You'll also notice there's a bookcase in the background, but in that one there's no, almost no books on it. <laughs> it's, uh, it's video games and various other uh, things that were not book related, there's like three or four books on it and they're in Japanese, not in English. Because at the time I was doing a Japanese uh, course and I was uh, intending to read fiction in Japanese because I thought it would be a way of encouraging myself to read uh, Japanese and learn the language. That is way more complicated than it sounds. And um, yeah, I don't read in Japanese because reading in Japanese is so much slower when you're not a native Japanese speaker. And my Japanese is not even slightly close to good enough. I'm, like I say, I'm going to call it there. This has been a uh, an experience, and I want to thank everyone for taking the time to listen to me uh, bitch and moan about my problems. And uh, hopefully, the uh, the next few videos on this channel are going to be uh, more thought provoking, interesting, and bookish related because that's my intention. I'll be able to put up a couple of really interesting breakdowns of video games as well, which I would th I would like to think will be interesting even if you're not a gamer because it will show some of the, uh, the the appeal of video games. So if you're here for the bookish content, try out the video games content. You might find that, um, I always say, try each media yourself. Uh, gamers, you should be reading. If you've got the chance, read a book. Hell, if you're playing games that don't require a focus on, uh, on a narrative, like if you're playing a racing game, for example, or you're playing um, a, a shooter or a dungeon crawler where there's no real storyline, stick an audio book on in the background. I've done that, and you actually can focus on both. If you're playing games that don't require narrative focus, you can listen to a storyline on an audio book. It's a fantastic way to consume both at the same time. Like, playing Need for Speed at the same time as listening to uh, uh, listening to an audiobook. Honestly, that is, that's bliss right there. Uh, so give it a try. I'm sure that it will make your gaming more interesting when you can relate things in games back to narrative elements in books you enjoy. Like It, it improves both mediums if you engage in both of them. I'll see you guys in future videos and um, I hope that, uh, that the Tornado Shorts account will manage to make my medical issues a little less of uh, less of an overwhelming uh, weight on my shoulders. One thing I will say is this video alone, just recording this right now, has made me feel so much better. So I think this is a step in the right direction. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.